So a topic that frequently comes up in my weight loss clinic is the intake of dietary protein on a daily basis. Um, and I think the misunderstanding is a lot of people when they go on a uh, diet, you know, they cut down everything, you know, they decrease their carbs, they decrease their fats and they decrease their protein. And that, you know, is problematic. I mean, first of all, if you want to maintain fat free mass, so you want to maintain muscle, you need protein. Um, also, several studies have shown, and I'm going I'm to link this to this video, that um, consuming a high protein diet, if you're healthy to do so, this is of course not medical advice, there's always people that cannot take in high protein for several reasons, so ask your doctor if this is okay for you before you start anything like that. But if you're healthy and you're taking in you know, a high amount of protein, and we're talking about, in my experience, uh, for most people I recommend 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. So if you take, a, let's say, a 150 pound individual, they can consume up to 120 grams of protein per day. Um, I personally might even go higher. I might go to one gram per pound per day. Um, and you know, the results are usually a lot better when we keep that protein at this high level. And then we can play with uh, carbohydrates and fats. I usually recommend to keep the carbohydrates on the lower side. And the easiest way to do that is, of course, you cut out simple sugars and uh, processed you know, carbs, like, you know, junk food, baked goods, these kind of things. Cutting those out, you know, leaves you, where do you get your carbs from them? You get your carbs from fruit, for example, you know, have, have water, whatever, a cup of berries a day and maybe a banana and an apple, right? Because that's, that's a certain amount of carbs. Uh, oats, maybe, you know, or the simple rye bread I talked about before. These are options, right, for carbs. Um, but then even, you know, once in a while, I eat some, let's say, white chocolate that has sugar in it. That's not great but small amounts, you know, small amounts. We're talking about a few pieces here and there because it has actually, why well, I like white chocolate, that's a bit of an aside. Um, you know, it is, it is very high in cocoa butter, which is very rich in stearic acid, which is actually helpful for weight loss. Um, but anyway, you keep your carbs moderate at least, keep them in the earlier part of the day, you know, don't have carbs for your last meal of the day, and then you play with your fats. You know, you don't want to take in too much fat. And that's another downfall I see in people following a ketogenic diet where they just go too crazy on fats. I mean, initially fine, because you want to get used to burning fat, but at some point you want to burn your own body fat. That's the whole point of it. Anyway, so back to the protein. So the important thing is um, if you're healthy, I think you can go up uh, very safely to 0 0.8 grams per pound per day. Now, where do you get that from? So I don't eat a whole lot of meat. I mean, I, I do eat meat, but not a whole lot. So you have to have some alternative sources for this. And I do use a uh, whey protein ice, the protein powder, that's one of the sources. You know, I have probably a couple of spoons, uh, scoops of those per day. That's 60 grams already, right? Um, and then you can use things like Greek yogurt and eggs. So there's different things. It doesn't have to be meat necessarily, obviously, right? But there should be clean and good sources of protein, right? I do not recommend plant protein so much. So um, I did a video about this, especially when it comes from soy and other, uh, you know, um, you know, kind of plants. I'm not a big proponent of this. One is they're very heavily contaminated with heavy metals. Um, also the protein, you know, the absorption is a bit different. So I don't really like um, the plant protein powders as much. Now with the exception possibly of pea protein. Pea protein is actually not bad. So there was a 2015 publication in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition that showed that even intake of up to 1.5 grams per pound of body weight and healthy individuals showed no evidence that consuming a high protein diet had any deleterious effects. Again, healthy people, they were resistance training, you know, and they saw how, how high can we go in protein before we see any problems. And they didn't at these levels see any issues. So even if you overshoot a little bit, generally it's fine, again, if you're healthy. Um, and then there was a 2020 review in the Journal of Obesity and Metabolic Syndrome that was titled, clinical evidence and mechanism of high protein diet induced weight loss. And they concluded that a high protein diet is a safe method for losing weight while preserving fat free mass, that means muscle. And it is thought to also prevent obesity and obesity related diseases such as metabolic syndrome. So I think that's actually very important to understand here as well. I mean, they observed that, you know, it, taking in more protein leads to more weight loss while preserving muscle. And I think that is really a key thing here. When I talk about exercises in people that are struggling with their weight, I always say, look, the most important exercise you can do is resistance training. It means weight training. And you gotta push yourself in a safe manner. Don't get injured, you know. Keep your reps somewhere between eight and 12 at least, right? But push yourself and build muscle. So work out probably a half hour to one hour every day, split up your training, 
one day let's say you do arms another day you do shoulders another day you do legs another day you do chest and lats um, however you want to split this up but train muscle yeah that's in my opinion more important than the cardio cardio is important as well there's no question about it but if you are limited in your time and you have to say well i can do one thing a day i would say do the weights then focus on your protein intake very very important you know as talked about earlier hugely important to keep that high and stable if healthy and then again you can vary the uh, carbs and the fats in my opinion again i've talked about this ad nauseum at this point but the last meal of the day i prefer not to have any carbs you know keep that high protein and then you know moderate uh, uh, fat and you know you have some fiber and some greens and whatever um, but this actually works quite well so again losing weight step number one when you're designing your diet when you look at what am i taking in on a daily basis keep the protein high and this also leads me to I mean when you are uh, trying to lose weight i think it's good to prepare your own food um, and be ready for the day this way if you make your food in the morning you know you know kind of all your meals for the day dinner many times you you can make that if you have time for that at night fresh that's fine but you know you do your breakfast and then at the same time you prepare what you're going to have for lunch and possibly a snack in the afternoon calculate your protein see what else is in there i think that's very helpful and it kind of sets you up to have a good pattern where you know kind of what comes in, in terms of your macros in the day it's less surprises and then of course you avoid snacks between meals so anyway Key thing is again, keep protein high. If you're healthy to do so, always ask your doctor. And um, that has, shown, has been shown in, in several studies to be very successful for healthy weight loss.